What is good YouTube? This video is going to help you pick your main for Dragonflight. With the new expansion just around the corner, it's about that time to make that very important decision going forward, which is obviously going to influence how you play the game massively. Whether it's the old trusty warrior you've been maining since 2004, I'm not too sure why all warriors seem to have mained that class since the dawn of time, but you all seem to be diehards for your class, or you're looking to pick something new up for Dragonflight and take it for a spin. By the end of this video, you'll have a much clearer picture of the direction you'll be taking for Dragonflight. Right before we dive in, 94% of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, but the more I remind you, the more of you sub. So if you're enjoying the content, drop your boy a sub. We're going to be dropping Dragonflight content every single day, but let's get back on with the video. Personally, I've always struggled with picking a main to play for long periods of time, admittedly due to being a bit of a meta slave, but also whenever I see something shiny on another class, I have to test it out. So being an altaholic has always been a bit of a problem for me, so I'm also making this video to help myself pick a class to stick with. This will make us a much better player all around and it's nice having all your achievements, rare items, mounts on one character although I know they're obviously shared across your account now for the most part. So here are some tips and tricks to help narrow down those class choices. First we're going to start off at the very foundation of your class, the roles. These roles are the bare bones of your class and will dramatically change how you experience the game. Obviously with group content comes different roles and depending on your preferences this can greatly help whittle down the vast amount of class choices that you have. Do you want to tank? The tank role means being at the head of your group, taking all the damage so that your team can deal damage optimally and take out the dungeon that you're tackling while leading it at the same time. Tanks are a very important role in that you will more often than not be leading your group, so if that takes to your personality, crack on. You also have a big responsibility in the fact that if you die, your group will be falling down pretty quickly behind you. So that and the fact you're either alone or with a co-tank, depending on if you're in a raid scenario or not, places a lot more pressure on the role itself. So again, if you thrive under pressure, get tanking. A massive pro to the tank role is pretty instant queues. Due to the role being played less just by default, as the majority of specs are DPS, you will have a huge advantage getting into groups much quicker. So you won't be doing the equivalent of running rings around Ouroboros while you wait to get into a group. This benefit also comes to healers. If you want to heal, your main task when in grouped content is obviously keeping your team alive. Keeping your group and more importantly your tank healthy is vital to complete the content you're doing quickly and efficiently. Efficiently. This allows your group to focus more on DPS as they don't have to press their own defensive cooldowns and waste time and instead can pump their damage. Healing is actually low-key very stressful, but it's a very reactionary playstyle and can be heaps of fun knowing that if you weren't there, no one would be alive. Healers are the unsung heroes of group content. Don't expect many thank yous, but after a hard dungeon or raid boss, you will be left feeling very satisfied. And when you do get those rare compliments, it feels that much better. Finally, we obviously have the DPS role, do damage. Take out the mobs as fast and efficiently as you can, playing your rotation to the best of your ability, and your job is pretty much done. Using utility and defensives is a big part of your kit as a DPS role, but that's also what healers are for, am I right? But unironically, the old saying of a dead DPS is no DPS is very relevant, and you should try to keep yourself up as much as you can. Get out of those swirlies. You won't be topping the DPS meter as a floor POV now, will you? DPS can be split into melee or ranged that are actually significantly different. Melee, you will find yourself amongst the action, fighting hordes of enemies where you can barely see your character, but they tend to have faster play styles, slashing up enemies with weapons or instant cast spells, with lots of mobility as well to get around the fight. Sorry, Death Knights. Whereas ranged in general is a much more relaxed take on the DPS role, fighting from a distance with spells that take a second or two to cast, you can actually see your character out here, but you tend to do more mechanics in general, whether you have to soak up swirlies or quite the opposite and obviously get out of them before you finish that big meaty Chaos Bolt cast. So if you'd like to lead your group to victory, dictate the route and the pace of your party and be a walking meat shield for your group, it sounds to me like you should be playing a tank. If you'd like a more reactionary playstyle where you're keeping your friends alive by healing them after they keep standing in fire, then maybe you should consider healing. And finally, if you're a competitive person who wants that number one spot on the damage meter and likes to see big yellow numbers all over your screen, then obviously you'll want to be playing DPS. Now, hopefully we've narrowed down your choices by quite a considerable margin, but even after that huge hurdle we've overcome, we now realize that there are six tanks, seven healers, and a whole lot more DPS to choose from. How are we even going to be able to whittle down these numbers to settle on one class for Dragonflight? Well, firstly, I'd start with a the theme of each class. For me, class fantasy is a massive 
massive part of choosing what class I want to spend my hours on. Starting with the tanks again, we have different styles of tank. Do you like the stereotypical sword and shield? Well then Prot Warrior and Prot Paladin may be for you. Blocking attacks from their foes and countering with a one-handed weapon. On the other hand, DK's parry attacks with their massive two-handed swords or axes and use blood magic to heal up the damage they've taken. Brewmaster mostly use their combat skills and stagger mechanic to keep their health pool more stable over time, which their healers love. Brewmasters can also use two-handed weapons but also have the option to dual wield along with a Vengeance Demon Hunter. Demon Hunters use the power of Fell Magic and Demon Spikes to defend themselves or maybe you'd like to be able to shapeshift into a bear and soak up damage with your Iron Fur and big health pool. So which setup from the tanks listed do you like the sound of? Which weapon retakes your fancy and what kind of playstyle do you think you'll enjoy? These are the questions you should be asking yourself when trying to cut down your options. If you don't like how the class actually looks or plays, believe me, you won't be spending very long on that character. The same obviously works for the healers. At base level, obviously all their aims are just simply to keep their allies alive and healthy to keep them all in the battle. But again, they all have very different playstyles. Holy Paladins, along with Discipline and Holy Priests, focus on using the power of the light to restore health of their allies. However, holy paladins tend to find themselves in melee using their melee attacks to generate healing. Similarly, Discipline Priests generate their heals from dealing damage, but from afar, along with their Holy Priest friends dishing out massive AoE healing. Alternatively, Shamans and Druids use the power of nature to heal up their buddies, Druids using heal over time effects and shapeshifting to deal off damage whenever they can, and Shamans using their totems and water sources to flood the group with huge heals. Evokers use the power of the Bronze and Green Dragonflight to directly heal or heal over time, and the Mist Weavers do some fancy punches and kicks and weave the mist to dish out their healing. They all play and look completely different from one another, so as for all roles in WoW, again, pick the theme you like and don't pick off the numbers. Lastly, we obviously have the DPS. Obviously, with the plethora of specs we have for DPS, a lot of the gameplay from spec to spec will be similar to an extent, thus making class fantasy that much more important. You want to find a class or spec that really resonates with you, from the type of armor they wear to what kind of spell magic they use or what type of weapons they wield to take down their foes. If you want to be a sneaky lone wolf with daggers ambushing your enemies from the shadows, choose a rogue. Similarly, taking on the stealth approach is the feral druids, biting and ripping your enemies to pieces with massive bleeds over time. Do you want to charge headfirst into battle with massive swords and axes? Well then, you can choose between the death knight, warrior or paladin. If you like to do the same but with war glaives and you're an illidan fanboy or fangirl, Demon Hunter is your choice. If martial arts is your gig and you enjoy using your fists and legs to defeat your foes, you can choose the monk. Or do you want to harness the powers of frost, fire and arcane magic? Mages for you. Do you want the opposite and summon demons to do your bidding and use fell and chaos magic to deal huge damage? Warlock's your pick. Maybe you'd like to use a bow and arrow and command your pets into battle to deal your damage for you. Well then, you can't go wrong with a hunter. You have hybrid classes being able to dish out off hills through the likes of Balanced Druid, Elemental Shaman, Shadow Priest, and the new Devastation Evokers at range. Along with Enhancement Shamans, Feral Druids, and Retribution Paladins being melee hybrids. These hybrids tend to come with a lot more support and utility for your group, but sometimes tend to suffer in damage because of this. The choice really is yours, albeit a very hard choice. Or maybe you're just looking to kick back and chill while out soloing or running through dungeons and raids with your friends, so you're looking for the easiest classes to play. Well then, I can recommend you the Druid as your tango choice. As for healers, I advise you to jump on the Holy Priest. And for the DPS specs, if you enjoy melee, I'd set you up on a Demon Hunter. And if you prefer a ranged playstyle, which I would definitely say is the easier of the two DPS playstyles, then Beast Mastery Hunter is your jam. All these specs I've mentioned are relatively straightforward to play to a decent level when compared to their counter parts and you'll have the easiest time possible learning them as you journey through World of Warcraft. Ultimately though, I would choose the class you most connect with. Try and pick a class where you enjoy many of the different specializations, and obviously part of that will be due to the role that spec actually fills. If you're like me, for example, and have no interest in using the Holy Light, then don't pick a Paladin, or Priest for that matter. Personally, I haven't had much interest in these classes, because of that reason, so I've never really properly played one. I've always drifted towards the more nature-based classes in the Druid and Hunter, but I also get a kick from the more edgy demonic classes like the Warlock. Using the fantasy as your main factor in choosing a main will give you the most longevity in my opinion, and trust me, I am very well versed in being a sucker for re-rolling. Ask everybody I've played with, it's the first thing they'll say. I'd strongly advise avoiding picking your class based off of them being the meta, 
it will be very short-lived and you won't get the same experience from the wonderful game that we all know and love. Classes can be tuned in the blink of an eye and suddenly all that gear you've acquired is now rendered useless because you only want to play the flavor of the month classes. So just know that if you're going to ignore this advice then you'll be swapping your main every other month. Obviously this is completely fine though, play the game how you will enjoy it, that's ultimately what we're playing the games for in the first place. I am just highlighting that you won't have any connection or bond with your character which although sounds very cringe is actually a massive part of the beauty in this game. So these are the steps I've been using and will continue to use going forward for every expansion of World of Warcraft in helping pick my main. And over the coming few days, I'll be making more videos on my personal experience of how I chose a main going forward for Dragonflight. But what about you? Are you sticking to your trusty main? I'm jealous by the way. That you've played since vanilla or are you switching things up for Dragonflight? Maybe you'll take the new Evoker for a spin. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know what classes you are all going to be maining in what looks like an amazing expansion that's coming up. If this this video helped you make that decision please feel free to drop a like and drop a sub to your boy and until next time peace